guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel, Layla here. And so today I'm going to be focusing on a big marker review with a back to school theme. So I've got my Arteza Inconic pens, which are basically just fine liners that I'll be using to line my piece. I've got my Prismacolor Coal Erase colored pencil in Carmine Red, my big markers, and then my Express It blending card that I cut into this nice rounded design. I'm not sure how I'm gonna, I don't know, should I do it landscape or portrait mode? I'm not sure, depends on what I draw. And so since the focus is reviewing these big markers, I'm gonna go ahead and open them up. I bought these on Amazon. They were like $20, I believe, and I can't open them. What in the world? All right. Ooh, they have like a soft cap. It's like, like a suede kind of feeling almost. Obviously it's not, but it's an interesting feel. All right, so this is the marker. It's actually quite a large nib. I thought it'd be a bit teenier, but it comes to a pretty fine point and they don't seem to have color names which is kind of a bummer. So I'm gonna have to keep them in order so that when I do my color swatching, I can just line up the color swatch by the order that I have them in. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. <laughs> nice packaging design. Definitely like that. So I like these pastel colors and then we've got our darker colors over here. So let's go ahead and color swatch. And so there's 36 colors in total and with these markers being $20 for the set, that comes to about slightly more than 50 cents a marker. So like maybe 60 cents per marker, not that bad. Oh wait, so upon looking at the marker barrels better, there are color names. So right here we have pink flamingo and this purple that I have in my hand is, well, it's not purple at all apparently, it's petal pink. Okay, I gotta say, that that is actually kind of amazing considering most permanent markers like these don't have any label whatsoever as far as colors go or like color identification really. So I'm, I'm officially impressed. Now that I know that they have color names, I gotta write them down. <laughs> okay, so blue skies blue. And of course, I don't know where I'm gonna write that. Let's see. Okay, this is terrible. I'm just cramming these names in and it looks awful. I'm gonna start over with the color swatching. <laughs> okay, so upon finding out that the markers have color names, I'm gonna be working on a much larger sheet because there's no number identification. It's just color names. Let me just make sure. Maybe I'm not looking at this hard enough. <gasps> okay, can confirm there is no number identification, just color names, which is fine. I'm good with that. It's just the color names are so long <laughs> on some of them that I've got to like get more space. So this is blue skies blue. I'm really loving these <laughs> names though, like peach parfait, tiki hut tan. Amazing. Makes me feel like I'm on vacation, but I'm not. <laughs> these three colors right here, prairie berry, prairie berry, desert rose, and plumtastic purple look ridiculously similar even more so the prairie berry with the plumtastic purple like desert rose has a more lightish pink effect but these two are ridiculously similar and i know that's just like such a small issue to bring up but i just hate when that happens because i just feel like what's the point why is there two colors or two markers exactly the same Ooh, this is a nice orange super bright definitely doesn't match the cap though i can say that i was kind of expecting more of a terracotta kind of look but this just came out bright orange what's the name harvest orange what a name just in time for halloween though now this one definitely matches its cap. Interesting. Sunset orange. I'm loving these names. I love how they name even like their ordinary colors as something extraordinary. Like this is clearly just a regular red, but they called it rambunctious red. Not gonna lie, I'm all for this. This is obviously just a straight black, but it's tuxedo black. Ho, ho, ho. So now I'm just gonna check out some blending, see if I can do it with these kinds of markers. I imagine I can, cause they're permanent markers, so I don't see why not. I mean, the blending transitions might not be too great, but I'm sticking to more of the pastel kind of colors 
for this first one because pastels are easiest to blend. Yeah, not too bad. Definitely not the best. Okay, so we did pastels. I'm gonna try going from dark to light. So I'll probably do maybe margarita green, key lime, and then end up in forever green. So let's see, margarita green. I mean, yeah, it went as expected. You can definitely see some hard transitional lines going, even with pastels, but I mean, it's not bad. I'm gonna go from this red to this orange. And I know I'm staying within the same sort of color families, but there's obviously a reason for that. It's just easier. The transition is just a bit more smoother when you go from color, from one color to the other, where they're right next to each other on the color wheel, so. And there we go. So this one definitely had a bit of an easier time, I almost wanna say. Like you can still see the transitional lines also, but I feel like the overall effect came out better. All right, not too bad. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and start creating a character. And so basically I'm just using my Prismacolor Cola Race extremely lightly. Okay, so this pose ended up being a lot harder than I had hoped for, that's for sure. I just wanted to go with something more relaxed instead of too posy, I guess. Okay, so now that I have basically the pose down and pretty much everything else, I just go ahead and darken certain areas just to like see them better. And then I'm basically just gonna start coloring with outlining. So I used Peach Parfait for her skin. And now I'm using Pink Flamingo to kind of shade in and get some shadows to her. And then I'm gonna use Tranquil Teal for her eyes. And it's a little hard to appreciate when you don't have lines on it. It just looks weird. It's the only reason why I don't care for this way of coloring, but I've always enjoyed the end result. So sometimes you just gotta stick with it. Definitely liking this Polynesian purple that I'm going with for her hair. And then for shading on her hair, I'm going with this misty blue color. I thought about doing the desert rose color, but I felt like that was a little too dark. So I figured this misty blue color would be a good darker color for her hair. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of inking to the eyes, because they're freaking me out a bit. <laughs> I don't know, I just have this issue where if I'm not liking how a piece is looking, it tends to demotivate me, as ridiculous as that is. Okay, so I lined her eyes, gave her some lashes, and I'm feeling better about it. <laughs> Probably gonna go ahead and, I don't know, I was gonna use a mixture of like the Black Bianco Micron pens that I have and the Arteza Inconic pens. Yeah, cause I like using colored fine liner sometimes just to sort of give it not such a harsh black line or black outline. But yeah, this burgundy colored fine liner definitely gives it a more relaxed look. I almost want to say realistic, but I just feel like that's kind of funny considering that this isn't really a realism kind of style, but that is kind of the effect that it gives. And okay, I'm gonna stop before I end up inking the entire thing, which is not what I want to do because I still have to finish coloring it. <laughs> And so I'm doing her shirt in like a yellowish tone just to add some warmth to contrast the cool colors that I have going on in her hair. And what I really like about these markers is that I feel like they're often seen as school supply kind of markers. And so it's just fun to take a supply like this and show off the fact that you can use them for art like this. Okay, so I'm going with a light blue for her denim jeans it's actually ocean view blue these color names man and i'm gonna see about making her shoes this super bright yellow blaze and like this lemon bliss color is basically a highlighter at least that's what it seems like maybe i'll put accents of green in there yeah i'm gonna use the slime sorbet and i don't know these shoes kind of look obnoxious but i'm kind of liking them <laughs> and then i'm gonna do more blue with this misty blue color for her backpack is it too much color like as far as like brightness kind of feels like it okay so now that i finished my character i'm gonna go ahead and move on to the background 
and I'm coloring in this concrete bench type thing. I don't know. Back at my high school, we had these random concrete things like this <laughs> in our courtyard of our high school, so I figured I'd just go ahead and uh, make that. <laughs> Covering large areas with these markers is a little tricky, only because they do tend to streak a bit, but if you just add another layer of ink, kind of gets rid of that. The only thing though is the color gets considerably darker when you do. The cool thing about its streakiness though is that it does give a pretty cool texture to this concrete bench thing. Because right now I'm making horizontal lines and then I'm going to make vertical lines, which then just gives the concrete a really cool kind of look. All right, so now I should do like some sort of shading, like just to show that a shadow is being cast under her so that it actually looks like she's sitting here and not floating above it. All right, and that's that for the concrete. And then I've got trees in the background, but then I'm gonna have a lot of white space in this middle area. I gotta figure out what to do with that. Let me see. So basically I'm just working on filling in white space in the front area and I'm a big fan of green, so I'm filling it in with different colors of green. Kind of creating this very cool dimensional effect, going from this lime green all the way to my darkest green, which is a forever green. All right, that concludes the grass. The only thing I'm not crazy about is I kind of made the tones too uniform. Kind of looks like it was printed, you know, in like straight lines. Should have like varied it up instead of went like straight across. Thinking about adding a railing back here, just to like give the background more interest. Let me sketch the idea first. Yeah, I think I like it. I think I will do a railing of some sort in the background. I'm just kind of freehanding it as I go across the page. Mostly because the piece itself isn't very large, so I don't have to make sure it's the straightest line I've ever done. Straight enough. And like sometimes some iron railings have designs. So I'm gonna do a design. Something simple, because I don't think it would be too complicated if it were out of school. Okay. I think there'd be a little bit more grass over here. All right, and for the trees, I'm gonna use this adobe orange. Kind of, I mean, I know it says orange, but kind of like just looks like a pretty light brown in my opinion. And I'm basically just doing vertical lines to color it in, to sort of mimic the vertical lines of the bark of a tree. And then more lines. <laughs> so this is a honey brown, slightly darker in order to give that textured look. And then my darkest brown, which is a woodsy brown. And so I think I'm gonna go just with a blue hue color for the background where the white space is left. And I might have the colors blend out. So I'll go from like this hot aqua color to a lighter and lighter blue color towards the top. I hope it works out because I have no idea if it's going to, to be honest. <laughs> so one thing that I'm trying is I'm going from this really, really dark aqua blue to a teal color as I move up, but I'm trying to avoid that pretty hard transitional line when I go from this color to a lighter color. So I'm doing the tip to tip method to try and avoid that. So the transition's not too bad, but I still got some pretty hard transitional lines, but I did what I could. <laughs> That's dark. So I'm gonna see if I can get a better transition by doing the vertical line coloring and then kind of going from this teal color to the light Ocean View Blue, which is my lightest blue color. You know what it actually ended up looking like? <laughs> it looks like a riverfront. So it looks like this is water over here where I mix the teal in, and then this is the sky. I probably should just make this water, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. All right, and then I'm just gonna finish up with lining some different areas, just to sort of pull it all together. And that's that. I definitely didn't think I would be doing this much of an involved piece with like a character and a background and all that jazz, but I'm actually really happy with it. There are some things that I wish I could have changed. Like I'm not too crazy about her hair. It feels weird. It kind of looks like a wig, but I had a ton of fun with these big markers. I think I consider them a back to school kind of supply. I mean, for a set of 36 at $20, that's pretty awesome. 
And plus you can use it for any other school related things. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.